Hey everybody, welcome back to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert and it's Tuesday and I'm trying to do some tags on Tag Tuesday. And so today I'm going to be doing the 10 strange bookish facts about me. It's not officially a tag. It's something that Britta Bowler started um, from the second shelf. And it's kind of taken on the life of a tag. And I, I cannot remember for the life of me if somebody has tagged me to do this or not. If you tagged me, I apologize. Normally I keep really good records of who tagged me, but for some reason I didn't write this one down, which could mean either that no one has tagged me or I've just forgotten. But I wanted to do this one because at first I really struggled with this topic because I don't really find the things that bookish people do all that strange. I think the rest of the world might find a lot of what we do strange, but you know, that's their problem. Um, but I, I gave it a lot of thought before I came up with anything that I thought was even remotely different from what other people were doing. So I'm not sure how strange these are, but we're going to plow through anyway. So number one, I really enjoy audiobooks more and more the last couple of years. I've learned to enjoy them, not just for in the car, but my favorite reading experience for a lot of books has been a joint audio and text experience. Um, and I love reading aloud. When I was a teacher, I used to have to read aloud quite a bit, especially when we did poetry or more literary works where the students were struggling to hear the cadence of the words. And I have done a lot of reading aloud over the years, both to my son and then to my students. But for some reason, I don't like when other people read aloud to me. Uh, even on a lot of videos, when people start reading aloud from the books, I have a tendency to skim through those passages. I'm not really sure why that is, given that I do like audiobooks. I think that is strange. Number two, uh, you can't tell that I have read any of my books. I. I don't leave any physical evidence that I've been there. And I think this probably dates all the way back to elementary school when we had the library talk where the librarian came in and told us how to treat books respectfully. I took that as the gospel, of course. You know, never fold a page down. Never, you know, get your food, your food over your books or leave your book's spine uh, bent backwards or anything like that. And I think it exacerbated when I had my bookstore because I would want to read some of the books that came in, but if I had left any evidence that I had read them, I couldn't then sell them. So I, I learned to read books, even paperbacks, especially trade paperbacks. There's no evidence that I've been there. I, I don't break spines. I don't mash covers. Uh, I'm very gentle with my books. Number three. Uh, right now, my books are not really organized at all because I haven't really unfinished packing yet. I have procrastinated to the point where I don't even want to unpack now. You'd be proud of me. I actually unpacked a big box yesterday. Alas, it wasn't books. It was just household items. Uh, I, needed, I needed the recharging cord for my little sweeper to, to sweep up some dog hair. Um, so I unpacked an entire box yesterday but I have not unpacked most of my books. So my shelves are not really organized yet. Uh, in the past, I have tried a lot of different ways. I've never tried by color. That just doesn't seem to make any sense to me, even if some people find it visually attractive. But one of my favorite ways was I had a bookcase in my classroom for a couple years where I used to leave my books arranged by the order that I, I read them. So roughly one shelf per year, and it kind of became a visual log of my reading journey that year, and I kind of like that. Uh, I'm not a huge rereader of books, except for the ones that I was teaching, and so it wasn't really a problem finding anything. I knew roughly where everything was, even if it took me a minute or two to locate a specific book. But I, I kind of like that. I don't think I'm going to be doing that here in my new house because I have different bookcases in different rooms and I'll be using them for different purposes if I ever unpack. Number four, uh, I am strange in the sense that I have never really liked buying used books. I don't even typically like used bookstores. There's something about the smell the chaos and the clutter and the disorganization. Now, they're not all like that, but the, the typical, stereotypical 
used bookstore is one where you can't find anything because there's just stacks and piles and shelves collapsing under the weight of books. And people find that quaint and charming. It just, it induces terror to me. And I don't like the smell of used bookstores. But I will say that of late, Doris and Kendra have been talking about this chain of used bookstores in the Southeast called McKay's. Uh, and there's one only about an hour from me in Greensboro. So I may have to give that one a shot. And it sounds like more of the kind of bookstore that I would appreciate. So maybe I'll get over my phobia of used bookstores. I've also had a problem, and this is more of a political thing, but since I lived on the royalties of books for a couple years, I'm very conscious of making sure that authors get paid for their work. And when you buy a book from a used bookstore, the author doesn't get paid for that. Um, I know it's true that an author doesn't get paid every time somebody checks a book out from the library, uh, but there's a certain measure of that that's expected by an author and a publisher. But if one person buys a paperback book and then 15 people read it, that's 15 potential sales that the author is not getting for his or her novel. And I, I like to support the authors who write the books that I buy, so I, I typically buy new. Number five, um, this has to do more with writing than with reading. When I was in graduate school and was teaching at the university level, I taught a lot of writing classes. That's just what graduate students are forced to do. But I had never taken any writing courses. Uh, I was one of those writers who learned how to write by reading, which from all the research that I've read is, is the best way to learn how to write is by reading everything. I was amazed in graduate school how many people said they wanted to be writers, but they didn't really read anything. You don't see any of them selling books. Um, but when I was writing nonfiction, and especially when I wrote my books on um, finance or economics, I was never daunted by that project, even though writing a long book can seem like an endless project. It was easier for me because I knew exactly where I was going with those projects, and so it was a step-by-step -step process. I knew what chapter one was going to be, and I knew what chapter 15 or 30 or whatever, how many chapters there were, I knew what that was going to be. And it was just a matter of connecting the dots, plugging in the research, editing, things like that. And it was a pretty straightforward process. In fact, I was a pretty mechanical writer in terms of my hours. I would write a thousand words a day. I would stop exactly on a thousand words, even if that was in the middle of a sentence. I did that because it gave me some place to pick up the next day without having to figure out where to start. And so I would go back in the mornings reread what I had written the day before, spend 35, 45 minutes editing what I had written the day before. It's usually about four or five pages. And then I would start writing the new pages for the day. And I was often done with my writing for the day by lunchtime. And so I would spend the afternoon either reading or doing research or playing golf or just playing. I felt good because I had done my work for the day. Now that I've retired from teaching so that I can write fiction, the process is so daunting to me that I'm just paralyzed. I've been thinking about the novel I want to write for, I think, over five years now in some form or another. And I have not been able to make myself write even page one because I don't know exactly how to do it. And that terrifies me. It's really, it's really stupid that nonfiction did never, it never terrified me, but writing fiction does. Um, number six. And I'm not even sure how this is strange at all for readers, but I'm a huge list reader, whether it's lists of classics, lists of prize winners, lists of backlist titles and authors, recommended reading lists for college courses. I have always been a big list reader to the point where I would have long lists and use random generators to pick my next read because there were so many on the list. Uh, I'm not sure anybody is quite as as compulsive about it as I am, but it's it's just the way I help decide what I'm gonna read next. Number seven, um, this is kind of a contradiction, I guess, in some ways, and I, it's not really hypocritical, it's reading for different purposes, but throughout my career teaching literature, I taught read, uh, readers, students, how to read actively. That is how to engage with the text while they're reading it. Um, 
to try to predict what's coming next, to underline, to highlight, to write comments in the margins, to do anything they could to actively engage with the text. Yet I don't do that at all anymore. I did that when it was a text I was studying or was going to write about or was going to teach. But since I've left teaching, I don't write in my books. I don't highlight my books. It's very rare for me to do that now. And I don't think I'm reading any less actively. I'm just doing it in my head instead of writing it on the paper. Uh, number eight. As much as I love reading literature, especially the classics, I've never really been interested in the lives, the biographies of classic authors. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe because there's enough of a hangover to the old school idea of close reading and who wrote the book doesn't really matter. What matters is what's on the actual page. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe biographies are just really long and they have way more information about a person's life than I really care about. What I really care about is the books. Um, maybe somebody out there has some good biographies of authors that they could recommend to me because I have never wanted to just go out and pick one up. Number nine, um, as much as I would love to get the stream of books like a Steve Donahue gets, I don't really like advanced readers copies. This goes back to my days as a bookseller when I used to get boxes of these things. I didn't read a lot of them because they're books that didn't really interest me. And then I never knew how to get rid of them. You can't sell them or you're not supposed to sell them. I know there are some used bookstores that do and that also pisses me off. Um, and I don't have enough in real life reader friends to unload my advanced reader copies on them. So I would rather be a year behind and get review copies that are the actual completed book. Another thing is I didn't like having arcs on my shelves. I, I wanted the actual book. And so it's really kind of a, it, it's, it's kind of strange that everybody on BookTube tends to want to read something even before it comes out because they're excited about a new release. And I'm just not. Um, I like new releases, but I like seeing them in the actual finished copies rather than the advanced readers copies. And, and I think that's weird. And I don't really know exactly why that is. And then number 10, um, despite writing about books as a graduate student and as somebody in academe and writing in journal articles, um, for many years, I had a book blog where I just wrote reviews of what I was reading on there. I've discovered over the years that I don't really enjoy writing about specific books. Even my Goodreads reviews have gotten much, much shorter than they used to be. They used to be what I would consider a full review. Now it's a short paragraph and it's mostly just impressions. Something about writing about the books I don't enjoy. I think I would enjoy writing a book about the reading life, the reading experience, but just writing about individual specific books, I'm not sure I really enjoy that much. And that one I can't explain. I don't know why. Um, maybe some of you all have a similar experience. Maybe that's why I found BookTube and have enjoyed BookTube because I love to talk about books, but I don't particularly enjoy writing about them anymore. Weird, I know. Anyway, what's your strangest book fact about you? Uh, how many of these 10 do you find actually strange or do you think they're pretty boring and routine? Like I said, I think a lot of what we consider strange behavior is strange to people outside of the bookish world, but probably not to others inside the bookish world, uh, like other booktubers and people reading or people watching these videos and so on. Uh, I hope you're having a good week. I'll be back again on Friday with the Friday Reads. And until then, I'll see you later, everybody. Bye-bye.